I'll start by asking you guys how you came across uh, with, across this story because I mean I I'm sure you've heard this a lot, but in, prior to this film, I wasn't too familiar, you know, with this community yeah. story. So can you talk a little bit sure. about the the genesis of this film? Yeah, definitely. And for and I just want to thank you for um, checking out the film and helping us spread word about it. It's really appreciated. Um, we 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 had this baby, and uh, we discovered the the town of Medora through a New York Times article by a guy named John Branch. And we just were instantly captivated by the story of this small town where the factories have closed and things have gotten pretty dire. And this high school basketball team, the Medora Hornets, that never went. So, you know, we, we read the article. The next day, we drove from Michigan, where we lived at the time. It's our, our hometown is Ann Arbor, Michigan. And uh, we drove from Ann Arbor down to Medora, Indiana, five-hour drive, and, and got a chance to meet some of the players, watch a practice, meet the coaches, and, uh, and also just wander around the town and get a sense for what, you know, what it feels like there. And we're just struck by the eeriness, the stillness. You know, it's, it's not a ghost town, but it's a town that once had 2,000 people and now was less than 500. Right. And, um, and we're, you know, we're, we, you know, we love basketball. We love documentary films. We've, you know, we're from the Midwest. You know, and that, that's a, I don't even think Medora is a, is a Midwest story. It's really, a, you know, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of towns across the U.S. that are experiencing, you know, the same challenges as Medora. Mm-hmm. But we just, it felt like very familiar to us because you go like 20 minutes outside of Ann Arbor, there are towns like Medora, you know? Right. Um, and so we were just like, wow, we looked at each other, we are like, we got to make a movie about this town and this team. And we didn't even know yet, you know, we, we, we always felt that like, you know, the personal stories of some of the players would be, would feature heavily in the, in the film because even in that New York Times article, you get a taste of some of the challenges that some of these kids face in their home lives, you know? And so we, we didn't know the individual kids yet, but we just had the sense that there would be some really rich and compelling stories in, in some of their experiences. So we, uh, yeah, we, we basically... Um, Andrew was living in New York and I was living in LA. We subletted our apartments, um, got a hold of some camera gear, and uh, got a few friends to roll down there with us. And we spent uh, almost a year um, filming, you know, the, the team over the course of a season. All right, awesome. Uh, well, I, I guess next I'd like to address uh, your respective roles as co-directors of this film, and I love to hear, you know, both both of your, you know, your. Uh, uh, your, your ideas or your comments on it. Um, typically, when bringing a film to life, you know, a director has a you know a style, obviously, or aesthetic, if you will. You know, yeah. when making a said film. So, uh, with this film, it's a little different because you have two captains, you know, kind of steering the ship um, yeah. to put you know well, to put your I'm... you know stamp on that story. So I know that could be a little tricky. So therefore, can you discuss what each of you guys focused on as the respective co-directors to complement each other? Definitely. I mean, this is Davey again. My okay. feeling is that, I mean, our approach is so similar, and our, our feeling for what the story should be, you know, it was just this personal look at these at a few kids' lives in this small town, you know, that, that really stands for all small towns around the country. And also, you know, with the basketball element being a metaphor for, you know, the struggles of the team, that they just can't compete with these, you know, bigger schools. You know, it's kind of a metaphor for the struggles of the town. We, 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 had, we had the same ideas about it. In my mind, you know, having both of us there, it's kind of just like, it's almost like having two of yourself. Okay. Like if you've ever just felt like, man, I wish I had two of me right now so I could <laughs> do, take care of all this stuff and do all this stuff. It was like having two of me, you know? Because whenever Andrew was off filming, I knew he was getting some magical stuff. We would come back late at night, share the footage that we'd each gotten over the course of that day with each other. And, and it was really exciting to see, you know, like, wow, here's this amazing scene. I couldn't have been in two places at one time, but since there's both of us there, we, we, we could be. And it was such a huge undertaking, too. I mean, you're talking about, you know, this, this project was three years. You know, it was we were there filming for eight months. We're talking about 600 hours of footage. It's hard for me to even think about doing this on my own. How do, how do documentary... Here's, every once you hear about documentary films that are made one single person, I, how, do they, how does it even happen? How do they... Yeah... It was just so much work. Also, it's great to have people to bounce ideas off of. You know, I think, for me, having someone to talk to about the film, instead of, you know, just 
thinking in my own head and, and wondering stuff, you know. Being able to talk out loud and work through things with Davey, you know, Davey's such a gifted storyteller. And, uh, you know, I learned so much from him before, uh, you know, before, before the film and during the film. And so, you know, yeah, we both have things that we bring to the table. I'm really great at talking to people and, and getting... Um, and getting access, you know, uh, in situations that might feel a little hairy for others. You know, I have no problem. Like, I was telling Davey, um, or we were talking to, to, to someone, I uh, talked to Coach Gilbert last night. He's in town here. And, you know, a lot of filmmakers, you know, there's a bar, for example, in, in, in Medora, the only bar, one of the only businesses, it's called the Perry Street Tavern. And, I mean, it's pretty rough, you know, by most standards. I mean, it's... Um, I had no problem walking in there and, and, and hanging out with those people. You know, my mom's from a town smaller than Medora in Indiana. These are people that I grew up with. You know what I mean? I just like the people, the kids that are in the movie, those are kids that I, you know, went to high school with. So it's not like, it's not a stretch for me. So, you know, we, we all brought different things to the table. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, and then it also it's fun. You know, it's, it's fun to do and experience it with a friend. You know what I mean? Davey and I have, been long friends for a long time and worked on a lot of stuff together but it's just enjoyable to be able to share the experience with someone too you know okay all right well, well, well jumping uh off of that uh you know as you guys were talking about with with the the people of Maduro, the the players that you came across and the coach um jumping off of that are you guys still in touch with them and you know if so are there like any updates that you guys can provide you know with some of those storylines that you guys address in the film yeah, absolutely. Um, this is Andrew, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah, I, that was probably, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> probably the most rewarding part for the, uh, of the experience has been really getting to know the kids and their families uh, and the coaches. Um, my mom was in Indianapolis, so I still go down to Medora, and I love going down there. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do is to go back to the school and, and you know, catch up with the kids. Um, friends with them all on Facebook, which is really fun, uh, hearing all the high school drama that goes on. Um, but I'm very much, you know, involved with the kids' lives, too, you know. I talk to Dylan at least once a week about college and, and the, you know, the things that he's going through, and, you know, we talk about life, and I talk to Rusty all the time. I'm always G-chatting or, or Facebooking with those guys, so it's like, um, you know, a lot of people have commented and said that there's such an intimacy with these kids. They, they they felt so open to us. I think that's because you know we were we became friends. You know, and and you know, we were there for so long. You can't just pop into a, a community or into someone's life and expect his life and expect them to open up to you. You know, you really have to earn that. Right. And uh, I, I think that we put in. You know, the kids knew that we put in the time. You know, that we, we didn't go back to L.A. and New York on the weekends. You know, I did not leave that town for seven and a half months, you know. And so that commitment of being there every day, you know, because a lot of people talk the talk but won't walk the walk, you know. They want to do, they want to do a film or they want to do an endeavor and, you know, things kind of fizzle or, or for whatever reason. You know, to, to keep coming back every day and to keep, to be consistently in their lives for that amount of period, that, that, that amount of time, um, I think that's why we were able to capture so many intimate moments, you know. All right, all right, great. Uh, well, th this will be addressed to you know both of you guys again to each of you. You know, after completing this documentary, uh, do you guys think that the next film that you will do will kind of be in the same vein, or do you guys think that you'll do you know something a little different? Um, you know, like most documentary filmmakers, we all want to do narrative films mm -hmm. eventually. Um, you know, to be honest, I you know I have a few projects that I'm that I have in the works that I can't really talk about, but it's it's um, extremely intimidating to think about going in and doing something like this again. You know, <laughs> it, it, it it's it's um, Davey and I think he made a joke the other day that if I would have known it was going to be this much work, I don't know if I would have been able to do it. You know, because you start out doing something. It was funny. I would go through these phases where you know I, we filmed for eight months, and I remember after we filmed. Because it's not just a physical exhaustion of, of, of being, of working seven days a week, 12, 14 hour days of being on your, you know, um, it's also the mental exhaustion of connecting with people every day. And, and it's, it's really rewarding and it's amazing, but it, it really is exhausting, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I remember finishing uh, filming 
I went back to my parents' house and I didn't leave my bed for about a week. You know, I was just totally emotionally spent because, you know, with documentary film, you're, well, you're, you're shooting it, you're doing sound, you're thinking about, you know, where this fits in the, in the, um, in the grand school, you know, in the scheme of, of, of the film. You're thinking about, you know, how you're shooting it. You're, you're doing all these things at once. You're editing it basically while you're shooting. You're doing all these things. So it, it really, really takes a lot out of you, you know. And so the idea of just jumping back in and doing that again right now is like, it, it not even, can't even think about it. But, you know, Davey just finished a book of short stories that I know he's really proud of that just came out. You know, he's been promoting that. Um, he has other film things that he's, he's working on. I have other, you know, other film projects that are that are moving forward. So it's, you know, it's weird because I I kind of felt like Medora chose me and chose Davy. We didn't choose it in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it's like Davy and I were like, you know, we got to make a documentary film. Let's start reading the newspapers and come up with an idea, you know. And I think for aspiring filmmakers, it's, it's a lesson of like you really have to have a passion for documentary filmmaking because there's not a lot of money in it. And if you don't truly, truly, it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And if you don't really, really care about it, really genuinely feel like you have to make this film, it can fizzle really quickly. And so for us, I was so committed to the material, so committed to the kids and to the town that it was, I couldn't turn back. And it, it had started to grow, too. It started out really small, and it grew and grew and grew into this bigger and bigger project, where I never thought it would be. I never thought it would be on PBS Independent Lens. I never thought it would reach as many people as, as, it, as it will. And so that's rewarding, to be, and, and to be able to do it with a friend, too, you know? Okay, all right. Well, thanks so much, guys.